Now, Mr. Chairman, so, so where a subjudice is concerned, the bill takes away 3A from the ordinance. To my mind, it's a perception, I may be wrong. To my mind, when 3A has been taken out of the ordinance and it is not there in the bill, the questions referred to the Constitution wins stands self-answered. Because if you read the order of the Supreme Court referring the matter to the Constitution bench, a copy of which I have got and I have read, my, my view is that the entire reference has been necessitated by the provision of 3A of the ordinance, which no longer exists. Therefore, this is the, it is the prerogative, the, the, the right of the members of the House to debate the question of subjudice doesn't come. So far as overreaching or outreaching the order of the court, Supreme Court is concerned. Very shortly put, the position in my my, my perception is this. State makes, the state legislature makes laws for the states. The parliament makes laws for the union territories. For the national capital region of Delhi, which has a special status, the, the state legislature or the legislature of, the, of Delhi makes the laws on the state subjects except three. But, but as, my, as Mr. Jait Malani read out, by virtue of 239.3b, Parliament has a power to frame laws beyond these three. And that is exactly what the bill is seeking to do. Therefore, there is no question of overreaching. And what, what has the Supreme Court repeatedly said? Paragraph 164, two conclusions. These are the two conclusions. May I read out these two conclusions? The legislative 164C, the legislative assembly of the NCTD has competence over entries in list two and list three, except for the exp expressly excluded entries. In addition to entries in list one, in addition to entries in the union list, parliament has legislative competence over all matters in list two and list three in relation to NCTD. This is the conclusion in paragraph 164. C, paragraph 164 F, the executive power of the NCD with respect to entries in list two and list three shall be subject to the executive power expressly conferred upon the union by the constitution or by a law enacted by parliament. So this is the conclusion of the Supreme Court. And uh, therefore, now, what, what has the Supreme Court repeatedly held in the 2018 judgment and the 2023 judgment? Precisely this. And I'm very, very, uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for the fairness shown by the first speaker, Dr. Singhvi. If I'm not mistaken, what Dr. Singhvi said, the power of parliament is not in dispute. He said it very fairly. The power of the legislative competence of parliament is not in dispute. Then why would this law be bad? This law would be bad if it violates the fundamental rights, number one. Number two, if it violates any other provision of the Constitution. And if it violates the basic structure of the uh, Constitution.
ऑनरेबल मेंबर्स ऑनरेबल मेंबर्स यस आई डोंट हैव टू रिमाइंड ऑनरेबल मेंबर्स इट्स अ मेडन स्पीच यस प्लीज एंड 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 द ऑनरेबल मेंबर इज मेकिंग हिज पॉइंट वेरी रैशनली सर इट इज वन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू आई विल आई विल I will take. Well, the chair has taken a call. I will take two and minutes. And here we did. No, no, sorry. You have fifteen minutes. You have fifteen minutes. Should we? So far as one second. So far as one second. 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 and every time you rise and tell me time is over it is it is my authority on a maiden speech sorry honorable members i have given adequate time to every member on the maiden speech yes and i had every time pleaded with you to show respect merely because what the point is being made it is required not to be registered But to be digested, and you have an opportunity to deal with it. Uh, in, We are getting input in this house from a very experienced legal mind. We got it from Dr. Singhvi. We got it from Mr. Chidambaram. We got it from Mr. Mr. Jaitmani. We have to get also from Mr. Kapoor. Please, sir. In any case, Honourable Chairman, sir, I have come to the end of it. Violation of fundamental rights. the only fundamental right that could have been that can be violated is perhaps article 14 and that to the limited part of article 14 that the law is arbitrary is this law arbitrary this doesn't appear to be so the law may, may not be to my liking that does not make it arbitrary absolutely next does it violate the basic feature of the constitution sir i have to say something about the basic feature please there's a book by mr andar arjuna yes yes a for the former solicitor yes. general on the keshavan and the bharti case yes having read the book my view is that the doctrine of basic structure of the constitution has a debatable a very debatable jurisprudential basis i would not say anything more than this i wouldn't say anything more the doctrine of basic structure has a very debatable jurisprudential basis in any case in any case honorable chairman sir what the what the bill provides what the bill provides is diluted diluted form of what federalism because it's a union territory not a full fledged state therefore what you have is a diluted form a, a asymmetrical form of federalism and the third thing is does it violate any other part of the constitution the supreme court mentioned about triple autonomy what you have under the bill is a modified form of triple autonomy the bureaucrat is responsible to a lieutenant governor who is responsible to the the home ministry who is responsible to the house you have a modified form if you want a full fledged federalism which which today is a basic feature though i have my own perceptions there you can go for, you can go for an amendment for a constitutional amendment and make delhi a full fledged state now the most important thing the most important thing chairman sir is article 239 aa starting from 1 to 7 subsection 3 to 
is not under challenge before the Supreme Court. Challenge it! That is not under challenge. Therefore, in my respectful submission, my contention, the bill is perfectly legitimately valid. But, but I fully support Mr. Bikas Bhattacharya, who has been a very close associate of mine. What is permissible need not necessarily be right. In the House today, parliamentary democracy compels members to vote according to party dictates. Fine, I cannot quarrel with that. It's a small section of people to whom you appeal to their conscience. To me, the bill is correct, right? My conscience tells me to do something, I'll do it. But if somebody disagrees, his conscience must be left free. <laughs>